That's horrible. Are you kidding? Of all the places on the planet, it's going to land? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. That was a great one. Yeah. And I shot you in the face with a spur gun one here. <laughs> well, you weren't praying. Anyway. Bring it all back in. I want to start on this. If you're going to take a title, if you're going to make a title, it's called Who's Your Daddy? Yeah, I'm very serious. Who's your daddy? <laughs> Who's your daddy? Because here's the bad thing. Most youth in the church today have an identity crisis because they have no idea who their father is. You can speak of earthly father. You can speak of spiritual father. You can speak of heavenly father. You can speak of this world being your father. Because there is a ruler in this world. You understand that, right? You understand that you're in a war every single day for your life, for who you are, for who you want to be, for who God called you to. Every single day that you live is a complete and utter warfare struggle. You can deny it all you want to. You can say, well, that's not really going on. That's not really occurring. Wrong. I believe this to be 100% true. You want to go revisionist history on me? I didn't think so. <clears throat> So who are you going to inherit from? See, who is your daddy means who you're going to inherit from. Because your father, more than likely, is going to leave you something behind. Which means what? If he has a million dollars, he might leave it behind. That would not sting. That would be pretty cool. That's what inheritance means. Your dad's there. Something happens. He might pass away. It's in his will. He passes it to you. Why? You're in direct lineage of his family line. You follow me? See, here's the thing. Here's what's funny to me right now. There's a whole lot of you that are paying attention. There's a whole lot of you that already left the building. I don't even know why you waste your time. See, that's what's starting to chat myself. This. Sin is like chocolate-covered feces. Do you know what feces is? It's what fertilizer is made of. Any of you ever been through any crap lately? Guess what fertilizer is made of? You need some crap in your life so you can grow You almost have to explain it to them. Poop in your life makes things grow. It's unbelievable. It is. It's just like, here's some poop, and it goes into your life, and God goes, here, poop in your life. Because if my father's my heavenly father, then no matter what happens to me, that's what God intended to happen in my life. Because the Bible says that all things work together for my good. Why? For those that are called according to his purpose. To do what? Achieve what his purpose was that I was originally called to to begin with. Which is what? Whatever God said. But now we want to get to the point where my whole life is just directed to perform it. Now that's not how God works. That goes against Scripture. The Bible says, why do you plan on what's going to happen tomorrow? Because your life is like a paper, so you have no idea what you should be planning. Consider the lilies of the field. Consider the birds of the air. Do they toil every day? Do they wander around going, what am I going to eat tomorrow? What am I going to do tomorrow? No, because they have faith in God that what happens tomorrow is exactly what God had planned. But we want to take all of this stuff and we want to make all of these great huge plans all the way down the road. But we will not wait for God to give us an inheritance. God has an inheritance for you that literally, Scripture says you cannot think, imagine, dream of, come up with the words in our language to even utter what it is. That's, right. That's what God wants for you. But we want to go out and say, no, I can do this. I'll prove it to you. Yes, you can do that because it says it twice in 1 Corinthians. Everything's permissible in the 6th chapter. Everything's permissible in the 10th chapter. And they were so stubborn that Paul wrote it again and said, yes, everything is permissible, but I'll not be ruled by anything. Can you do it? Yes, we prove it every day that we can do it. I'll say it again. Yes, uh, we prove it every day. Can I go get hammered on the weekend? Sure, if you want to. Is that what this wants? And I, I want to just throw this out there. And this is this is how I... My pastor's here. There are other pastors in this building. We test each other. We... we Iron sharpens iron, so one man of God should sharpen the other. And when we have pastors in here, so I'm going to ask you guys to test me on this. But if some, if I'm doing something wrong, I hope in your life, I'm doing something wrong. We established on that. Some of you are looking at me like, what's he talking? I'm doing something wrong in my life, right? 
I'll give you free reign and run right now. This is how Scripture was written. You should be taking this and reading it to me. Why? Because you love me and you want the best thing for me. But you know what it is now? Judgment. You can't judge me. You're right. You're exactly right. This judges me. And if I go against this, if I'm doing wrong, I hope that you love me enough and you'll come to me. As Scripture says, I believe it's in Peter that says, and you should go to your brothers that have been led astray. Is that not right? Take them captive to do His will. Should we not be going to our brothers and saying, this is what Scripture says, not my opinion. And for your life, it's wrong. And then we should come together and reason and find out what God says. So who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? Why don't we live that way? If God's our dad, let's look at the last six or eight months of our lives. Is God going to be very proud? Is He going to be very pleased? Is He going to... Now, <laughs> you're not answering to me. I don't want that. <laughs> Please, don't even put it on me. I don't think any pastors in here want that on us. I will say this, and I say this with all the <clears throat> joy that I can muster. I thank you, Jesus, that I am not Catholic because I do not want to be that priest that you come to and bring your stuff to because we don't need that. That's why I'm considered Protestant. Because I have faith that I can go to God on my own. So who's your father? Who's your daddy? The reason that that, that came up so, so harsh and so hard is we've gotten to the point now we believe more of what we see than what we should have faith in. I'll say it again, and I thank you for that. We believe more what we see, what's tangible, what's in front of us, what's 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 there, than what this says. First Peter two nine. It's what camp's based off of. It says you were called to be a holy people. Do we understand what it means to be holy? Glow in the dark and float one foot off the ground. And the angels flutter around behind us, going. Oh. In another course. No. Can you imagine? Wouldn't you want to just slap the snot out of that person? Come here. You're not, you're not that guy. Gee. Sam. You don't float. And if you don't brush your teeth, your breath will stink. Right? I'll give you a pastor tea. Here it comes. It will. If you don't brush your teeth, your breath is stinky. All right? That's all it is. Trust me, been married 25 years. So that those of us that have been married, you wake up in the morning, your wife turns over in the bed. Good morning, honey. <sighs> your eyelids just fell off your face. Because everything in this region just melted into the whole world. That's why we go to the bathroom as soon as we get up, because we're going to find our face and push it all back up. Come back out of there. It's like, oh my gosh, you did a really good thing. No, man, we don't, it's not going to be perfect. Ugh. Why were we... <laughs> Woo. We were called to be a holy people. What's it mean? Yeah. What is holy? There's the problem. Oh, God. Who, man? But see, we think there's all this other stuff on there. Like we... Like we... You know, pulse or something. Without sin. Right? You were called to be a holy people. Do you know in one translation it says peculiar? I like peculiar. We have a lot of peculiar in here. A lot of them are wearing purple shirts. Funny thing? It's really funny. About half the people in here are going. Ah, oh, man. We're called to be a holy people, a peculiar people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Set apart by God to do what? Share Jesus. Real simple. But I have to ask you this, and I'm going to keep asking it all night long. I'll probably keep asking it all weekend long. Who's your daddy? If you're taking notes, here we go. We're going to go into uh, 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy 2, 5 through 7. We have any athletes? <clears throat> we have any athletes in here? Oh, they're great. Athletes. It's not spelled that way. Are you an athlete? I'm an athlete. 
Yeah, you mean that. I actually heard a guy the other day say athlete. Like, what the fat's an athlete? Anyway, athlete, what sport? Football. This is pointing that way. Underwater basket weaving? Football. Football. I like underwater basket weaving. I gotta be in it. Yeah, that's great. Track, who else? Sports? What sport? Softball. What sport? Yeah. Football. Soccer. Soccer. Good lord, there's a lot of sports. Dancer? That is a sport. Excuse me? Dancer. No, wait. Wait. I am not in touch with that one. Yeah. Football. Football. Track. Oh. Sorry, I gotta go over here. Soccer. Soccer. Yes. Oh, non sporty people. Okay. Baseball. What? Cheerleading. 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 Birthdays. <laughs> You're kidding. It's not a baseball game. Let's go. You want to okay? What? What? Cheerleading. Basketball. Basketball, John. Yeah. Now. Listen. What happens when you train for your sport? This is, what's, this is what happened in the Christian realm. You ready? We're at bat. You don't know what I'm talking about? You don't belong in sports. You're at bat, and you take out a javelin and throw it. That's not working. But it's what we do all the time. Why? Because we take Scripture and say, well, I don't have to do that and that and that and that. I can do this if I want to. But that's not what Scripture says. You can't train as an athlete in one sport and compete in something else. Unless you're Bo Jackson, which you were great at a whole bunch of sports. But most of the time, you train in one sport at a time. Especially if you're, you've got coaches that I had. They're like, can I go out for wrestling? No! You can't wrestle? That's horrible. Wrestling coach loved it. Football coach, not so much. Why? Because they wanted to keep you in their sport. But if you're going to train uh, something specialty, uh, uh, ice skating. No, rugby is a sport, something special. Okay, I have to use it. Sorry, it's nepotism. It's my kid. <clears throat> Pole vault. If you can't run with a pole, you shouldn't pole vault. Right? Because halfway down there, it's going to be a Q-tip. And start, ow! And do it. No, it's wrong. It's just horrible. We, I've seen some wrecks. I mean, I've only been to like three or four meets at Thomas's Inn. And it's like, oh! It's just nasty stuff. I saw a guy, and tell me if I'm wrong, I saw a guy that went up. Cleared 12 feet, he never let go, and he didn't actually make 12 feet, and he never let go, and the bar that he went over was between him and his pole. <laughs> and he still didn't let go. He gets all the way down to the thing, it's like, <clears throat> and the pole goes, boy, you want it. God, I was like, I, I've never done it. Has anybody here never pole vaulted? Thank you. I've never done it. You would know, probably. Let go of the pole! He got all the way over, it's like, ah! No, if you don't know how to pull, if you can't pull vault, do you get what I'm getting at? An athlete has to compete by the rules, by the sport that he's in, with discipline, and the only way that it happens is if you continuously, every day, and especially now. Are you kidding me right now? The last statistic I heard for baseball was like, you've got a 10,000 to 15,000 chance of just making it to college and playing. And it exponentially, I think, triples just to get into the minors. It's unbelievable what the competition level is. And baseball's smart, man. They're, they're literally, I watched the, uh, the baseball draft was on a couple of weeks ago. The top 10 guys, only three of them were in college. The rest of them are all in high school. The NBA is studying, ready? Sixth graders. 
They're looking at sixth grade kids to start going after them now. I'm talking the Celtics, the Bulls, the Thunder, Woo! all of them. They're looking at sixth graders. Why? Because they know that if they don't start that young, they won't get them. But if you want to compete as an athlete, you have to compete by the rules. And you have to compete in the right sport. Basketball, for me, no. Big no. Why? I can't jump. I mean, I got like six or eight inches. That's you know, good. I can't. I can't jump. I could touch the rim in high school. But, you know, I'm six foot. I should be able. To. Spud Webb, five eight. He was he was winning the dunk competition. Are you kidding me? That's like wow. You coming down? I mean, that's that's impressive. So what I do? Well, I went to wrestling because that's my role. Come on, and I, I can do that. But I shouldn't, I should, no ball ball thing? No way. Ew, ew, ew. That's it. Why? It's not my sport. I don't, uh, yeah, I do. <clears throat> well, I think you, well, I appreciate it. I may be schizophrenic, but at least I haven't checked. <laughs> and if you don't think I don't believe that, it's on my notebook. It's a sickness, but weird and wired are just, a letter of play. It doesn't matter. I can make a case for sports for each person is as different as your walk is from somebody else. Which means what? You have to walk in a way that God called you to. Which means you can't do it the way somebody else would do it. Keep going in that area. 2 Timothy 5, that's 6. To say you're a farmer, you've got to plow, you've got to sow, you have to plant. Has anybody ever planted anything? Does anybody suck at planting things? I can kill plants faster than any human I've ever met in my life. I can buy my wife things, and if I give them to her, I can kill them before she gets home. I've proven it, right? I have done it before. She's gotten home. Oh, a nice dead plant. <laughs> But if you plant something, do you realize that there's different plants? Hopefully so. Do you realize that there's plants that you have to maintain? They're higher maintenance. Do you, have you ever met people that are higher maintenance than others? Yikes. Okay, we'll just skip that over. We'll gloss over the other side of that. <clears throat> but there's some plants. Corn, make a row, throw the stuff in it, leave it alone, water. Tomatoes, you got to make sure the little vines are doing their thing, and then you got to get a little other little thing, put it up behind it. Backstop and make sure that they can climb it, and then that they can have you know all their stuff, and then you have to water them right out of the window. <laughs> That's why I don't plant tomatoes. Different plants have different what? Maintenance schedule. To do what? Well, if you don't do this at this time, it ain't gonna grow. So I'm gonna hit one of you somewhere with one of these things. Third one. Still in Second Timothy five. I think we might be <clears throat> getting really close. You say you're an American. You say you live in the United States. I know people that complain about that. <laughs> which I have a form letter on my computer. Move. <laughs> Simple for me. <laughs> you don't like it here? Hi. But if you say you're an American, guess what? You have to live by the rules. Right. You have to abide by the laws of the land. This is not even scriptural yet. We're not even in there. Why? Well, if you don't, you get thrown in jail. It's real simple. Anybody got a parking ticket? Except for Jesus. Because I have faith. That's my family. And that's what we say. Anybody ever got a speeding ticket? There we go. Now we're getting a little touchy. There's more in here, but they're all going to hell because they're mine. But it's okay. Really? Right? I mean, come on. You know what my favorite sport is? Watching people speed to church. <laughs> it messes with my head. I mean, I'm going to church, and I'm weird because God really, really, in a very serious way, has condemned, not condemned, he's convicted me about speeding. Pretty much he just said, don't. Gee, okay, really? Not at all. Uh, not even like the allowed insurance limit? <laughs> no, okay. <clears throat> so I can go like right up to the limit and then just stay there? Okay. <laughs> And I'm driving to church, it's like, 
Especially if you drive the Autobahn, which is 169 going to Wausau. And now it's six lane. Oh, great. So, I've been past... <laughs> Before it was six lane, when it was still two lane. I got passed on both sides. <laughs> and it's for real. I mean, I, were you with me? You might have been. I don't know if you one of my kids was. I mean, it was like... <laughs> and it was two Mustangs. I mean, I'll tell you. I don't care. I don't know who they were, but I, uh, <coughs> one was white and I can't remember the other. It might have been silver. I mean, it was like a blur, so it didn't really matter. Like a bullet, and it was gone. But I'm driving, it's like, and I wasn't doing like a Model T. I mean, I wasn't going that slow. I was going at least 65, I think. But I'm driving on the highway, and I was like, yeah. like God. <laughs> who drives in here? Come on, raise your hand if you drive. Don't you at least want to see him coming? <laughs> I at least want to be able to look in the mirror and know that, okay, hey, man, that guy's coming. Woo! That was impressive. Oh my God. No, I didn't get that. I didn't, I, it was in a loading ramp. There was nothing. It was just gone. You have to obey the laws of the land if you're going to live here. Okay, this is where we're going to hurt. You ready? We're all going to hurt. You have to get a job. Ugh! You have to get up, out to bed. And go get a job. Why? Because that's the system we live in. Some places you can be in what's called an indentured servant, which means what? You work off your debt for your entire life. You can have the money, but you're going to work off your debt. You can go to other countries, and if you don't work off your debt, they stone you. It's real simple. Why? That's the law of their land. That's why I don't want to move. <laughs> I want to stay here. You know what the goals in my life is? You just talk amongst yourself. You know what one of my goals is? What? To die without a lawyer. There you go. <laughs> you may actually say I'm 100 percent serious. I'm gonna die and I don't have a lawyer. Didn't need one. Why don't you just But in this country, you better know one. That's right. Because you're gonna have to be defended. Lord. And if you do that, you accomplish something that most will not. I don't know, I was gonna put it on my headstone, die without a lawyer. <laughs> Still dead. <laughs> Still gone. I guess from heaven I can go. Sorry, <laughs> be a lot else You'll probably come to heaven. You'll be a lawyer. <laughs> yeah. I was connecting dots. Sorry if you don't know. That. Now I want you to think back on these: athlete, farmer, American. What do they have in common? Let's go back to it. Who's your daddy? We say that, but do we live that? We say that, but do we act like that? Okay, let's let's get real, real, real. We were up here, all of us, well, pretty much all of us, a lot of us were down here in front, worshiping, right? Right. Yeah. In the first 10 or 15 minutes, lose your dad at him. Well, it's uncomfortable. It's not in the, not in the mood. Here. I wasn't engaged. I didn't like the song, man. It's not my thing. You know what I can't wait for more than anything on the in life? Stand before God and give him those reasons. You know, God, you're just not my thing. Blip! <laughs> I mean, I would. We're creating God's image. Or, you know, maybe Thor is my over with a lightning bolt or something. <laughs> something where, see how rebel, relevant I am? Or relevant, I think. I, I like to be relevant. You know what's really funny? I'm going to have that 15 cameras come to me in the morning correcting me and saying, yeah, it was relevant. <coughs> now, why am I doing this? Because I want you to think about something. As an athlete, you have to find the right sport. And as a Christian, you have to find the right walk. Because you can't walk by anybody else. As a farmer, you have to sow, you have to plant, you have to plow, you have to water, you have to cultivate, you have to take it and nurture it, and you have to look. It's the same thing in your Christian walk. Every single day, we need to be in this, doing what? Finding the answers for the problems that we find ourselves in. How many of you have peace that passes your understanding? Is that not sad? Come on, y'all. What did Jesus die for? 
What did, he, what did he die for but that one thing? I want to give you the peace that passes your understanding. I want to take your sins. I want to wipe them away. I want to take everything that you've done. I want to wipe it away. I want to take everything that you're going to do. I want to wipe that away. I want to forgive you completely of everything that's ever going to happen in your life. Nothing can separate you from my love. So I want to die for you so that you don't ever, 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 ever have to worry about that. And we still do. We still do. We still take it. And we, and we grab a hold of it. And we say, no, that's my sin. I can't let go of that. Jesus died for you. It took eight to, eight to ten hours. He died for you. So the, the big question of, of who's your daddy is, is your daddy the daddy of this world or, the, or is your daddy the daddy of heaven? And your words mean nothing. Your actions mean everything. I can say, I believe this, and if I walk in another way, 1 John, I am made out to be a liar, and my religion is worthless. If any man claim to know who Jesus Christ is and walks in any other path. So who's our Father? Who will you inherit from? What will you inherit from? Well, kingdom protocol literally means God in heaven is my Father. Therefore, everything that He is, I inherit in this earth. Yeah. That's how simple it is. I want to plug you into that. Cindy and I had a long conversation about kingdom protocol because if we're not careful, we're going we're gonna, to you know, miss it. We're going to go right over the head. No. This, you guys, come on, you guys multitask 16 or 18 times higher than, than, than my generation ever even considered. You guys could be on the phone with someone, texting six or eight different people. Your iPod in the background is going off because you're listening to that, because you've got music that you have to play in order to text people and be on. And you can be on Facebook, and you can be IMing like 16 or 18 different people. And you can go over and get on Skype, and you could have to be having a conversation with somebody. Aren't you guys impressed with all that stuff? And then you could be having a, a, a conversation with somebody else. And then you could be over here on your Kindle reading a book. I know I'm not wrong. I've seen people do it. I didn't do it. No. Because my schizophrenic person gets in a fight with me, I'm not going to pull that off. But you guys can do all of that. Thank you very much. You guys can do so many of those things, but then we get into something as simple as Christianity and just following God, and we make it so difficult. Who's your father? Not physical father. Kingdom protocol is... Kingdom protocol is taking what God called us to. So I want to take it down to where you live. Kingdom protocol is, Lord, what have you called me to accomplish? If protocol is a diplomat taking the ambassador role into another country and living by those auspices and those rules and those pretexts and contexts, what do you want from me? And God will literally say to you, listen to this really close. God will literally say this, I just want you to follow me. I don't want you to make it difficult. I just want you to follow me. But I have, I, I, I but I did, did, I have this, and I, no, I, I, I don't know where we got it. I don't know where we got it on it. But following God doesn't mean He's going to turn you into a nerd. Unless you want to be a nerd. I know cool nerds. My brother's a really cool nerd. And he'll prove it to you. He could come here right now, get on the computer, and make that dude smoke. He knows nine computer languages. I know like three words in French. That's all I got. I can say no in six languages. Bad thing is four of them are no. That's it. I need one more for you later. I get no in another language. But that's all I got. But what did God call me to do? I had this propensity. <laughs> Sorry, big word. I have this. Mm, Bent. It's what I do. My pendulum's pretty much swung all the way one direction, and it just stays there. Some, <laughs> I don't know who it was. It, might have, it was. it was my wife. She looked at me and said, "You're." What's she called? Uh, 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 Extremist. There it is. <laughs> Extremist. Which means what? My needle's going <laughs> the whole time, <laughs> and it doesn't come down very often. Does that mean you're perfect? 
Ugh. No. It doesn't mean you're perfect. It's just, I don't... Can we just talk for a sec? I don't know how lukewarm. I'm either going to be cold, um, kiss off, I don't want to talk to you, or I'm going to be so hot that I'm going to make you uncomfortable for your own. And I don't mean hot as in like fat, pretty often face. No, I don't mean that. I'm either going to be so cold that I'm going to hack you off and you never want to see me again. Or I'm going to get in here and I want to find things and I want to challenge you and I want to hack you off and I want to offend you and I want to make you mad and I want to shake everything that can be shaken. I want to get in your face and I want to slap you so hard. Why? Because if you won't turn the other cheek, we got a problem. I know what that means. I know what it means to turn the other cheek. I was with my youth group when I got jumped. I had a, a guy that was completely looped out, probably on acid or something like that. And he jumped all up in my grill. We were at Quiet the Fire. He jumped up in my face because he thought I had dissed a one. And he went flat, freaking, flat-footed after me. I had guys coming up after me. I don't know if some of you might know this story. Some of the guys coming up after me. Man, I'm an MMA. I had your back. I back, man. I back. I had your back. Where the fat were you 15 seconds ago? <laughs> but it happened. I don't, why does that happen? I don't know. Because what it says in here, turn the other cheek. Forgive. Walk away. Don't fight. I'm fighting. You're wrong. Smacking your back. You're wrong. The Bible says in Corinthians, what do you have that you didn't receive from God? And if you did receive it, why do you act like you didn't? And I received a gift from God. I've never been in a fight outside of my family. Which means I get the crap beat out of my, my, my brothers because they're both 6'4". One goes about 3 and a half. No, I'm stupid. Why fight that? Are you kidding me? And the other one is a ninja because you never hear him coming. He hits you and he's gone. <laughs> but the pain remains, and so do the markings on your body. But those are the two guys that I chose to fight all the time. But I've never been in a fight outside my family. Ever. I'm 50. That's the other one. Lawyer, no fights outside of here. I'm making a list. It's going to be a really, really, really tall headstone when I get done. Why am I that way? Because that's how God called me. The only reason I even want to share this with you is because that's how God... Look! God called you according to His purpose and plan. And kingdom protocol, finding out what that means. I know some of you in here 10, 11, 12, 13 years old. I know some of us in here that are 35, 40, and 50. And if we don't get it at one age or the other, we will never get it. I know people that are older than I am that have never gotten this. They have never taken hold of what it means to be called according to God's purpose. And no matter what happens in my life, that will be accomplished. And I'm starting to, uh, I'm not starting to doubt God. I'm starting to doubt us. Heart. Because the strongest force in the universe is not a, is not God, it's us. Because we can choose to blow him off. We can choose to take the gift that he freely gives and blow it off. And kingdom protocol means you're my dad. And no matter what happens in my life, you're my father. No matter what distractions, no matter what setbacks, no matter what happens in a day, no matter what losses I have in my life, you're my father. And we need to get side of that. It blows my mind that some of us think that there's a, I mean, how arrogant are we that if we think there's a sin in my life that God can't forgive what could we possibly do to negate what Jesus did for us? It's impossible. Scripture says it's impossible. But it keeps us from moving into what God called us to. God told me something this week before camp started. And it scared me. there's a real fine line in 
praying for something and then knowing God well enough to know that if you do it, he'll do it. You ever had that one feeling that if he does do it, I'm going to have the responsibility of it? Yeah. It's scary. It's harsh. It's hard. But God told me something this week about camp. And it's not just for the campers. It's for everyone that's here. And this has never happened to me before. He told me that if you lay it down, you'll never deal with it again. And he told me that if you'll worship him with everything that you have, he will pour out his spirit on you like you've never known. I'm not going to hold anything back. Because that's how God made me. And there's more of that in this room than there is the other. See, I think there's a lot more zealots out there. I think, I think there's a lot of people that are cautious about it. And you can't, you can't be a cautious zealot. It's either all or nothing, or it's partial. But if you'll let it go, you'll never be the same again. That was what he told me this week. He gave me this kidding me? Who's your daddy? I'm the wise guy you live on the internet. Who's your daddy? Really? Lord? Wow. And I ask you, no matter what's happened in your life, no matter where you are in your life, no matter what church you go to, no matter if you go to church or not, are you kidding? And I know <laughs> Cindy's going to get on this. But right before camp, we don't, we don't even show up for church. Right before camp starts, we're going to show up for church. I need to go to church. I'm going to camp. What are you going to get too much? I mean, you going to show up. Where's that line? I've been to church too much this week. Lord, I've had enough. Really? You know, if I go to church one more time, I don't know. I, I think one more time would put me on the top. I really did. I, I, if I go one more time, my hair's going to grow back. That's <laughs> <laughs> what's going to happen. It is. And I'm going to walk right up to you. Girl. Love you, nice. Got her name tag on. That's how I know she is. Do we really think we're gonna? So we come to this. This is the first night of camp. I talked to our youth group last week. It was last Wednesday night. And while I was talking to them, I don't tell you guys everything goes through my head. That would be pretty weird. But while I was talking to him, God said, you need to bring this up and teach on Sunday night. You sure? I just asked God, are you sure? It's cool. There's some of you sitting here within the sound of this microphone. I don't know why. Pastor, I need to have a conversation with some really smart people. Why is it that happens in us that we think we can wait and we've got time and we can do it later instead of doing it now. We have a decision that we know we need to make. We have a decision we know we need to make for God and we don't. We put it off. And it's beyond procrastination. It's beyond just being uncomfortable. Because you know full well, you know exactly where you are. I, I, I don't want to stand up here and God has given me a gift, and I'm going to just blow the lid off this whole thing. God has given me a gift, and that gift is throwing out the net and, and giving invitation. It's a gift. It, I traveled under a guy for a long time. His name was Dallas Holmes back in the 80s, and the guy was unbelievable at it, and I, I studied under that, and I, and I understand what that is. But here's the thing. Easy flip, easy flip back. 
And I'm so tired of playing camp game. I'm so tired of the flip for a week and then go back to hell for 11 months in one week. I'm so tired of that. I'm so sick of that. So I'm going to just deadpan straight in your face. If you want more of God, this is what's going to have to happen. Because if it doesn't happen tonight, for some of you, it ain't going to happen this week, period. And that was the honesty that God wanted me to use. I had something else that God had given me to, to end this, and it was very, it was just different. And I don't feel right. And I want to be obedient. Simply put, <clears throat> Do you want more? Do you want deeper? And do you want different? Do you want more of what God has for you? Are you tired of being the guy that got up to the to the home to home plate and you're getting ready to bat and, and you threw your football? Are you tired of being the person that you're supposed to be planting the corn and you went out there and, and just threw out alfalfa seeds out? If anything of that made any sense to any of you, you've got a sickness, that you, you've got a condition. That's all there is to it. And it shouldn't make sense to you, but that's how we live our Christian life. Because look at what we've done. And i, I got to get, and I'm, I'm done, I'm, I'm done. This is what we've done. I'm a Christian, and I don't have to live by that. I can walk like I think I should. I can talk any way I want. I can treat my parents any way I want. I can walk any way I want to, in any structure, any time. I have no authority over me. I can do what I want. That's how it is. Basically what we've done is, God, whatever. Because that's what the world wants. That's following the world's daddy. So who's your daddy? I'm going to open this for invitation. Real simple. <coughs> if you want more of God, come get some. In a second, we're going to open this up and we're going to we're going to have some altar time. If you want prayer, come get some. I don't care. I don't age, church doesn't matter. Is there anybody, and I need to ask this. Thank you, Father. I need to ask this. Is there anyone in here? Beyond any shadow of a doubt, beyond anything that you've ever thought before, you know for a fact, is there anybody here in here that does not know that they're saved? You're not sure. You don't know. Is there anybody at all? Because I'm not going to go any further without that. So everyone in here, you know for a fact you're saved. My hand's going to stay up on this one. Is there anybody in here that would raise your hand and say, I know I need to walk different? We're going to open this up to worship. We're going to open this up to pray. This for me, this is where camp lives. Right? There's nothing special about the casino carpet up here. It's just, this is, this is where camp lives. For me. This is camp. This is fun. The, the media stuff's fun. But this is camp. Because this is what it's about. Now don't stand up here. If you come down here, don't be thinking, well, you saw me raise my hand. I'm going to in front. You don't answer me. You answer to God. But I know this. I know in sports, no matter what sport it is, God give, the sport gives you a role to play, and you have to play it. You cannot be a shortstop playing first. And the reason I'm saying that is some of you are playing the wrong position. Some of you may be dating the wrong person. Some of you should be dating anything at all. You a mess, and you messing somebody else up, and you know that. Or the person you're dating is flat mass. And you need to get away from that. Missionary dating, don't believe in it. Ain't in here, don't like it, you. Am I against dating? No.
Y'all ready? You ready for real, real, real? Because I think God's more sick of games than we are. And that's got to stink. Cindy, do you want to do live? Do you want to do some stuff on altar stuff? We're going to start out with some on the, on the CD. <laughs> Let's pray. Stand up, please. says let's pray and he's the only one. That gets to me. My pastor says you have creative power in your words for your own life. So when we say let's pray, let's all pray. You want something in your life different than what you had before you came here tonight? <coughs> come down here. There's people that will be here to pray for you. If you want prayer, come down here. Hold your hand up. Get my attention. Get the attention of one of the counselors. Pastor, 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 Boy, there's a whole bunch of them in there. Let's pray. Father, thank you for tonight. Holy Spirit, change us. Change us. Kick us. Move us. Shake us. Whatever it takes. But move among us, Father. Make us different than when we walked in the door. Make us different than we came out of dinner. Make us different for the rest of this week. If anything, Father, just plow up our ground. Plow up the ground that's within us. Father, you are my daddy. You are my father. I have an inheritance in you. <coughs> I have trust in you. I have faith in you. Change us, Father. Change us, Father. If you want to be different, come. Come. Right now, come. Altar's open, come. Move among us, Father. Give us the strength and the courage, Father. We raise our hands and say we want to change, but we stay in our own complacency. Come. Come. Make us different, Father. Holy God, change our lives. Holy Spirit, move in this place. Change my mind, Father. Give me the mind of Christ. Help me, Father, as Hebrews says, to throw off the weights that so easily entangle me. And the sin that literally wants to weigh me down and cause me to stumble and cause me to fall. Help me to get rid of the junk that's in my life, Father. Help me get rid of this stuff. Everybody take one step this way. One more. Come on, we have to pray today. Here we go. Good, 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 good. If you know how to pray, and you know how to move, and you are ready to pray, I ask you to come down here and minister. I ask you to come down here and pray. I'm talking about adults or counselors. I'm not talking about any campers. I'm talking about adults or counselors. If you know how to pray, I'm asking. I'm throwing the net out there really long, really wide. I'm asking you to come down here and pray with some of these people. Come pray with these kids. Come pray with these that want a difference in their lives. Thank you, Father. You turn the music up a little bit. Thank you.
There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence. I've tasted and seen. Of the sweetest of loves When my heart becomes free And yeah, my shame is undone Your presence, Lord